We're now going to take a look at how you can create a test slash quiz. Go ahead and locate the place where you want to put your test. I'm going to go ahead and click the green dots. Go ahead and select add test quiz. Go ahead and give it a name. Set a due date for it. Give it a point total. Based on the number of questions that you have and the points that you assign those question values, you may need to go back and edit this point total to reflect that as well. Go ahead and give it a category. Periods there, factors there, sync to sys is all set. Numeric, which is gonna be our point value. And again, we have the same options. Uh, we, it's individually assigned to every student can take it. Again, you can use grading groups if you wanna assign different tests if you're in a situation where you need to modify assessments. And again, you can go to Schoology support and type in grading groups to figure that one out. It's gonna publish immediately. And we can't copy it over to other courses yet until after we've completed it, uh, but we can certainly do that as well. We're gonna go ahead and click Create now. So it's gonna take us to our quiz editing mode here. We notice we have five tabs on the top and we're gonna go through these tabs first. The questions tab is where we add question types. Uh, to add a question, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different question types that we can use on these quizzes. Additionally, if we don't want to make it from scratch using this model here, uh, we can ingest questions from a question bank within our resources if we have that set up. And we can also import test questions and answers from either Blackboard or ExamView if we use those as well, and that's the option there. A page break is going to well, create a page break in your test. And what that's gonna do is you can decide how many questions you want to show up on a page that students can view at a time. And we can insert text. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and choose a true false question here if we want to. When we go in to a true false question, again, we have the description box here. So we're gonna type our question here. We can bold it, again, we can make it uh, bigger or smaller. And now text for the true response, true and false is gonna be defaulted here for us. Um, we're gonna select what the correct answer is. We can require a correction if it's false, so that'll prompt them, no, that's not right, try again. Uh, subjective question right here, if we look here, subjective questions are not automatically graded. Uh, they are presented to you to be scored before the student's final grade is calculated. So we don't want this because it's either true or false. It's basically like a multiple choice, true or false. So this will be graded automatically. The subjective question would be some questions like a typed in response or a write in response if we wanted to grade it manually after the fact. You can also apply a timer to each question. And we can allocate the number of points that it's going to be worth. If we were aligning our objectives to assessment question types, uh, we could align those objectives here if we wanted to. Otherwise, we're all set. I'm go ahead and click Create Question. And this is what shows up here for us. If I want to go edit the question again, I would simply click this gear icon, go to Edit. And now at this point, we do see that we can add this to the bank right here. And so you can add this to a question bank. You can create a new question bank and it's going to go into your resources tab. We'll talk a little bit more about resources in lesson six. But basically, if you add it to the bank, you save it to your resources, and then when you're ready to use it again, you can import it from the question bank, and that's where you can import this question if we stored it into our bank itself. And we can reorder them as well. And go ahead and add all the questions you want, multiple choice, ordering. Um, so true, false, multiple choice, ordering, uh, fill in the blank and matching can all be automatically graded. Uh, the only one that needs to be subjectively graded is short answer and essay question that you'll have to manually grade before a student receives an overall score for that quiz. One of the things we'd really wanna do is take a look at our settings next. So our settings are defaulted here. These are instructions. So these are like test instructions that are listed here that you may want to show your students. Now by default, submissions are going to be disabled. So what that means is once we publish this quiz, 
even though the students will be able to see the quiz, um, submissions are disabled, so they won't be able to, to take the quiz. Um, in order for the students to take the quiz, we need to change this to enable. We can enable it until a certain date, or we can enable it from one day and a time period to another time period. Okay? So if we're actually putting this test here and I want them to take it as soon as I do it, I would enable it. If it's enabled, then that means as soon as I publish this and save this quiz, when students click this, they can take it. For now, I'm going to keep it disabled and I'll enable it later. You can take a time limit. Uh, you can give them a certain number of attempts. So they can have one attempt all the way up to 20 attempts. They can do it. So if you're looking more of a growth mindset model, you can randomize the order. So you can change it from paging. Uh, you can use the page breaks. Page breaks would have been put in in the questions itself. So page breaks come here. I can add a page break. And so what that means is this question will show up for students. Then they'll have to click next to go to the next question. If we go back to using page breaks, uh, we can specify in a bulk one question per page if we just want to do it that way. But if we use page breaks, then we have the decision to make between how many questions do we want to be presented at once for a student to see. Keyboard language, a language keyboard. You can have them if there are the modifications here we need or accommodations. Can they review their questions before they submit, yes or no? Can they resume it? So my students start the quiz, they don't finish it before the end of the period. Can they resume it? That's yes or no. And then view submissions. So this is the feedback that the students are going to get. Once they submit it and you give them their score, can they view their answers? Yes, no, or with correct answers. So no would be no, they would just get a total aggregate score that they scored with no delineation on question type. If I select yes, that means they'll be able to show each question that they got right and wrong. And then yes with correct answers is they get to see each question that's right and wrong and the correct answer is provided for them. And we can also choose to hide or show the point values by checking this box here. This means hide point values so they don't know the point value of a question they got right or wrong if it's worth one point, two points, or three points. So I can hide point values in this way or I can uncheck it and then they'll be able to see them. And then there are printing options down here if you want to print this out for students who may need a hard copy. So everything looks good for here. Um, I'm going to allow the test right here. I'm going to enable it so submissions are enabled. So as soon as I publish this, students will be able to take this quiz. I can preview it right here to the next tab. There's no attempt so far. And so um, I can preview it by clicking here. And this is what it will look like for the students. And if I want to go through each question, I can. When I'm finished previewing, we can confirm that everything is ready for the students to access it by going back to sample folder two. And now we see that we have our sample test quiz set up here. A sample test quiz has this green icon to match the green icon that we selected originally. And again, if I want to go back and edit it, of course I can by clicking edit here. At this point, now that the quiz is completed, I can save it to resources to store it for later. And I can copy it to other courses of course, and then delete move if I want to, and then completely unpublish it if I want as well.